Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai in Christ. Bless is another 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Mattathias, and to my right. I'm Officer Low Size. All right, so today's topic, today's topic is Jacob's Trouble. All right, today's topic is Jacob's Trouble. Let's get right into it. Give me the book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, and I want verse 46. 2nd Ezra, chapter 5, and verse 46. Uh -huh. And he said unto me, Ask the womb of a woman, and say unto her, If thou bringest forth children, why dost thou it not together? But one after another, mm -hmm. pray her therefore to bring forth ten children at once. And I said, she cannot, but must do it by distance of time. Come on. Then said he unto me, even so have I given the womb of the earth to those that be sown in it in their times. In their times. All right. So it's showing you that it's a process, meaning a lot of us want uh, deliverance. You understand? A lot of us are waiting to rejoice with Christ, but it's in a process of time. It all can't be brought forth at once. Do me a favor. Go to the book of Amos chapter 5, verse 18, and read that for me real quick. Amos 5 and verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. So the scripture says, woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. You know why uh, it's very dangerous? First and foremost, a lot of us ain't right. A lot of us ain't ready for that just yet. A lot of us only like to talk about uh, how things are going to take place in World War III, how Christ is going to come deliver us, but we don't like to discuss the tribulation portion. The tribu there is no salvation without tribulation. Right. Okay? So read that verse again. Verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. Uh -huh. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. And not light. Darkness and not light. Meaning what? You better have your, all of your stuff together right. when the day of the Lord comes. Okay? Um, drop that. Let's go to John chapter 16, verse 21. John chapter 16 and verse 21. Watch this. The book of John chapter 16 and verse 21. Uh-huh. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow. It says when a, a woman is about to give birth, all right, when she's having her labor pains, her birth pains. She has much sorrow. She's in much pain. Read. But because her hour is come. Uh-huh. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish. Right. So as soon as that child comes forth, whew, it's a breath of fresh air. She made it through. Uh, now if she has this baby in her hand. She, does, she doesn't remember anything about what she just went through. It's over. That's how it's going to be in that day. But once again, we can't skip over the, the sorrow and the anguish. Give me uh, Ecclesiasticus, Sirach, chapter 11, verse 25. Sirach, chapter 11 and verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forgetfulness of affliction. And in the day of affliction, there is no more remembrance of prosperity. Read that again. Verse 25. In the day of prosperity, there is a forget forgetfulness of affliction. Right. In the day of prosperity, there's a forgetfulness of affliction like we just read in John. All right. All right read on. And in the day of affliction, there is no remembrance of prosperity. It says there is no remembrance of prosperity. Now, let's, uh, let's get into it. Give me Matthew chapter 24, verse 41. So we went to those precepts just to show you uh, sometimes it's easy to get caught up and looking too far ahead and not looking what's, uh, at what's in front of us right now. What do we see? We see different mandates and different policies and laws being passed to usher in a tribulation that we've never seen before. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 21. Watch this. Matthew chapter tw uh, 24 and verse 21. Watch this. Matthew 24 and verse 21. Come on. For then shall be great tribulation, mm -hmm. such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time. So the Bible says that there's going to be great tribulation that we have never seen before. Before... The, uh, the appearance of the Messiah, the return of the Lord. Okay, from there, drop that, go to the next scripture. 
Give me 2 Ezra chapter 7, verse 6. So we have to wrap our mind around that. Anything worth having is worth fighting for or even dying for, all right, because it's that serious or it's that rewarding, all right? We're going to have to sacrifice in order to get to the kingdom so we cannot overlook the tribulation. Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 6, chapter 7 and verse 6. Come on. There is also another thing. A city is built and set upon a broad field mm -hmm. and is full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow. And it's set in a dangerous place to fall. Come on. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. Right. So it's saying you're not just going to make it there. You have trials to the left, tribulations to the right of you. All right. It's going to be very difficult to make it in. Read on. Verse 8. And one only path between them both, uh -huh. even between the fire and the water. Read. So small that there could but one man go there at once. Only one man can go at a time, at, at one at a time. Read. If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? You see that? We want to just look at the inheritance, but... God is telling us that we have to pass the danger that is set before it. What verse you at? Uh, starting 10. Read on. Verse 10. And I said, it is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, even so also is Israel's portion, mm -hmm. because for their sakes I made the world. Read on. And when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decree that now is done. Verse 12. Then were the entrances of of this world made narrow. Right. So after Adam's sin or his transgression, it says the entrances into this world, which is going into the kingdom of heaven, were made narrow, meaning it's not easy. You're not just born into the kingdom anymore. Mm -hmm. You have to overcome. All right. You have to overcome everything until the end. Read. Then were the entrances of this world made narrow. Come on. Full of sorrow and travail. It's full of what? Full of sorrow and travail. Full of sorrow and travail. Full of sorrow and travail. So that's where we need to have our minds at to get ready to endure the sorrow and travail. Read. They are but few and evil. Come on. Full of perils and very painful. Right. Full of perils and very painful. When you read the book of Acts, understand at the book of Acts, it never said amen, meaning it never ended. In this day and age, we are continuing the book of Acts. Paul and the apostles suffered many great afflictions that were painful. And guess what? We're going to have to do the same exact thing. Read on. Verse 13. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure. Wide and sure with Adam. Read. And brought immortal fruit. If then what verse you at? Uh, just finished 13. Okay. If then they that live labor not into these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. Now, he says right there, it says we can never receive what's laid up for us if we can't get through the trials, the sorrow, and the travail now. All right, so now let's go to the book of Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 6. So brothers and sisters, we have to make sure we have to make sure we're not looking ahead, meaning, yes, we desire a kingdom that is heavenly. There's no doubt about it, like it says in Hebrews, but we have to understand we won't get there unless we go through the tribulation. All right, Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 6. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse 6. Come on. As he now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Mm -hmm. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman in travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. So it says, every man on, with his hands on his lines, like a woman in travail, meaning what? As, as the nation of Israel, we are all going to go through those labor pains. We are all, we're not saying we're all going to have children, but we're all going to go through the anguish and the sorrow. Read. Verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It says, that day is great. That is, none is like it like we read in Matthew 24. This is going into the day of the great tribulation. Read. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. It is the time of Jacob's trouble. Read. But he shall be saved out of it. And a lot of us, when we read that, saved out of it, meaning what? No death is going to come to you. That's not what it means. It means if you endure until the end. Give me, Jer uh, not Jeremiah, Revelation 2.10. It says, if you endure until the end, Yes, and when Christ comes back, you will rise with him. 
Some will make it until the end, but everybody's not going to uh, make it carnally, right. meaning some of us will be put to death. But it says if you endure unto death, yes, you'll be saved out of it, and you will reign with Christ. Read what you got. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. So during the tribulation, during Jacob's trouble, God is telling us don't fear anything that we have to suffer. Read. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Come on. That ye may be tried. That ye may be tried. A lot of us are going to be in prison. Read. And ye shall be, you shall have tribulation ten days. Come on. Be thou faithful unto death. Be faithful unto what? Be faithful unto death. So yes, we have to prepare our spirits for what's to come. Drop that. Let's go to the book of 2 Ezra, chapter 15. Start at verse 5. 2 Ezra, chapter 15, and verse 5. Come on. Behold, saith the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. It says God will bring these plagues upon the earth. Read. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Come on. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Right. The, the time of the Gentiles has been fulfilled. So God will be visiting the earth by sending these plagues. Now jump up to verse 19. Verse 19. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, uh -huh. but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread for and for great tribulations. This is talking about famine. All right, it's talking about famine. It says uh, houses will be ransacked. It's going to be murders. There's going to be theft. Okay, jump to 2 Ezra, the 16th chapter. And I want you to start at verse 37. 2 Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 37. Watch this. Behold, the plagues draw not and are not slack. Uh-huh. As when a woman with child in the ninth hour Bringeth forth her son. Right. In the ninth month, bringeth forth her son. Read. Within two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb. Right. It says great pains is going into those contractions, meaning what? She's about to deliver the child. Simp, simp, uh, comparison to how we are about to get delivered, but not yet. We still have to go through the tribulation. Read. When the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Uh-huh. Even so. Even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth. Come on. And the world shall mourn, and sorrows shall come upon it on every side. Read. Oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle, and in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Pilgrims upon the earth, meaning what? You will go from place to place. A lot of you sisters got to get your minds right. Think about it. Men, not saying that every man's going to be okay. But men, we don't hold on to things like women do. How they decorated that living room, how she has a master bath with a, a walk-in closet. Sister, that's going to be destroyed. You're not going to have that during this time. So you have to get your mind right. Read verse 40 again. Verse 40. O oh, my people, hear my word. Make you ready to the battle. And in those evils, be even as pilgrims upon the earth. Get ready to go from city to city. Read on. He that selleth, let him be as he that fleeth away. Uh -huh. And he that buyeth, as one that will lose. Read on. He that occupieth merchandise, as he that hath no profit by it. Mm -hmm. And he that buildeth, as he that shall not dwell therein. You just built this big house, but a mandate comes and they say, hey, you know all of those Israelites? Yeah, uh, we need y'all to turn them in. So that big house that you just built on your own land, guess what? You're not going to get to enjoy it. Read. Verse 43. He that soweth as if he should not reap. Come on. So also he that planted the vineyard as he that shall not gather the grapes. Read. They that marry as they shall get no children. And they that marry not as the widowers. Now, it's, it's going into the same thing the Apostle Paul said uh, in Corinthians. It says, for those who are married, be as if you're not. Because the work is more important. Don't be so caught up with your family to the point where your family is the idol that takes you away. Because guess what? Our families ain't going to be promised to us in that day. Right. Read. And therefore, 
And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. Read. For strangers shall reap their fruits. Says strangers is going to take our houses, our possessions, our cars. Read. And spoil their goods. Uh Uh-huh. Overthrow their houses. Read. And take their children captive. You see that? You, this is the trouble. This is the anguish. This is the travail that God is talking about before the deliverance comes. Read. For in captivity and famine shall they get children, and they that occupy their merchandise with robbery, the more they deck their cities, their houses, their possessions, and their own person. You see that? Because it's going to be common law where they could do that. They're starting it. They're trying to usher it in through the, uh, the mosquito bite. Uh, vaccinations, all that stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but eventually it's going to turn against the children of God. How do we know? We're going to read it. Jump down to verse 67. Verse 67. Behold, God himself is the judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. So God is telling us in these last days, we got to forget our iniquities. Instead of saying, oh, man, I can't wait till the kingdom come, you say, "I I, I need to be focused on overcoming the sin that I deal with right now. Read. To meddle no more with them forever. Right. For how long? Forever. So that's, and understand, you just coming into the truth, that ain't something you just do in a day. It's a process. So the best thing to do is to start right now. And this should be our focus on the daily. Read. So shall God lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Read. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Right. We just read about the the burning wrath of a great multitude in the previous verses. It's going to be all-out war against those who fear God. Read. And they shall take away certain of you. God says, if you, what, don't leave off from your sins, you're going to be taken away because the earth is going to be filled with iniquity. Read. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you, being idle. Being idle. Get that real quick in Sirach 33, 27. Because a lot of us are idle, and this is what idleness teaches us right here. The book of Sirach, chapter 33, and verse 27. Come on. Send him to labor, that he be not idle. Uh Uh-huh. For idleness teacheth much evil. There you go. That's why a lot of our people are going to be taken away, because they're occupied in evil, and they did not leave off from their sins. Those are going to be the betrayers. Those are going to be the ones who give their brothers and sisters up in that day because they're not spiritually strong enough because they remain idle. Go back. Second Ezra chapter 16, verse 68. Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 68. Come on. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Come on. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle. With things offered unto idols. Things offered unto idols is going into drunkenness, revelance, fornication, adultery. The sins that plague you on the daily. So it's time we turn away from that. Read on. Verse 69. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision Uh and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Read. For there shall be in every place and and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Right. It's going to be open season against the Israelites. It's going to be a great insurrection, a turning upon those that fear the Lord. Read. Verse 71, they shall be like madmen, sparing none. They ain't going to spare the young or the old. They're going to go back to their true nature. Read. But still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. Read. For they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. Uh Uh-huh. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. But God is saying in that day, that's when we're going to know who the chosen is. Like Bishop say, a lot of us right now, yeah, yeah, we, we do work. We see each other on the Sabbath day. We look to, to par. We look like the righteous. We don't know anything yet. When your life is on the line, it's telling you right here. That's when you're going to know who's really for Christ in that day. Verse 73 again. Then shall they be known who are my chosen. And they shall be tried as the gold in in the fire. Right, shall be tried as the gold in the fire. Gold in the fire literally is what it's saying, in literal fire, to get out the impurities. But this is also letting us know that a lot of us will have to go through the fire, meaning a lot of us will have to lose our lives for this. And that's how you're going to know who his chosen are. Right. All right, drop that. We're going to wrap up. Give me Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. 
The book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. Come on. Be in pain. Do and what? Be in pain. Be in pain. Be in pain. We can't get away from it. Now we're reading the Bible a little bit different. We just thought, oh, man, we just got to work even when we're tired. No, this is talking about more than that. Read it again. Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion. Drop that. Give me Matthew 24 and verse 13. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 13. Come on. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. God says if you endure unto the end, whether it's to the second coming or until the end of your life, it says you will be saved. You will be caught up in that day. Give me Sirach chapter 4 verse 28. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 28. Come on. Strive for the truth until death. And the Lord shall fight for thee. It says, strive for the truth unto death, and the Lord will fight for thee. All right, so understand what we are a part of and what's to come, brothers and sisters. Last two verses. Sirach, we're going back to Sirach 11 from earlier. Now we're going to read verse 27. Sirach, chapter 11 and verse 27. Come on. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure. So a lot of us, in that hour of affliction, we're going to forget everything that was good. And a lot of brothers and sisters, like it says in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says many in the last days will be lovers of pleasures. Lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. Meaning what? When you're going through the tribulation, because you are such a lover of pleasure, you are not going to endure. Read that again. Verse 27. The affliction of an hour maketh a man forget pleasure. Come on. And in his end, his deeds shall be discovered. And yes, your deeds are going to be discovered. Last scripture, Psalms 18, verses 22 and verse 23. Watch this. Psalms chapter 18 and verse 22. Come on. For all his judgments were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. So in his in the, in the, in the day of his temptation, he said he didn't put away God's statutes and commandments. Read. I was also upright before him, uh -huh. and I kept myself from mine iniquity. So we got to be like the forefather King David right. in the spirit, and we have to keep ourselves away from our sins. This has been another 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Mattathias. I'm Officer Losias. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.